good team win. Uh, guys played very hard defensively. I thought it was the energy was great to hold their uh, hold their leading scores uh, to to uh, a lower shot attempts and uh, as well as some some inefficiency. So our players played they did their job today on both sides of the ball and it was a good win. Yeah, it's, it's, it's frustrating when you get out-rebounded every game, and uh, we have been lately. And tonight, uh, I thought we showed a lot of toughness defensively, first of all, to, to ha make them miss, and then secondly, to uh, try to rebound the ball. And I thought we were flying around on defense, meaning we were rotating, we were had energy, and we also ha showed some toughness. So I was, I was proud of our guys. Coach, I know, excuse me, you've been searching for answers. Do you think you found something with Bronny, Zai, and Boogie starting? Well, it worked tonight. I thought they played great. Uh, Boogie was terrific. He shared the ball. He made the right play at the right time over and over again. He only had three assists, but he probably had some hockey assists in there. He threw it to the open guy, and then that, that, that guy drove it or shot it or, or, uh, or got the assist. So I, I think you, know, you look at 22 assists with seven turnovers. Uh, Bronny, six assists. He had 13 this week. Uh, Boogie's been playing very well, sharing the ball. And Ozaya, you see his confidence growing and uh, very, very impressed with him. He actually had three rebounds tonight, so uh, you know the first three rebounds of his career, so it was pretty impressive. Andy, you mentioned uh, the defense session on the lead score. They fell into his hands, by the way. <laughs> 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 you mentioned the defense session on the lead score. What did you think of Bronny's uh, performance tonight? Did you think he played well? Well, the, the first play of the game, you know, we spent two. We only had one day to prep, but first play of the game, he got off his body and Pope made a three. So. So much for preparing, but then uh, Bronny gave great effort. Then Ozias switched off on him, and, and we had other guys switch and to hold him to four shot attempts because they run every play for him on the other end. And Pope is so good because he changes speeds. He knows how to use screens. He's a terrific shooter, great player. So just to hold him to four shot attempts was, was uh, and he had six turnovers. So so I thought it, we made him work, and uh, he had a couple open shots uh, and did a good sh contested shots. But uh, uh, yeah, you try to try. To, Make, make their leading score work, and uh, tonight we did that. For a talk about Kajan's game, he really played well tonight. Um, seems like he plays under control. He gets the men, doesn't rush things. His offense, and he likes guys at halftime and so on. What have you seen in his development? Well, he, he's, uh, as you said, offensively, he has a better feel. He, he's not as rushed. He's uh, not off balance as much. He, he's setting himself. He, he looks like a good offensive player right now. I th thought he made a good post move against uh, Oregon on Thursday night, where he uh, one two dribble in the lane, set himself, and so so it's it's nice to see that development. And we need our big guys to, to do that. We have to have them scoring, and then we have to have rebounding. Uh, I thought Vince Uwachuku was dominant in his six minutes before he sprained his ankle. He was terrific. Gosh, he was on offense and defense, and shot he challenged shots and. Uh, even Arrington and uh, Josh were, were good tonight with their length, and uh, of course AP set a record by three fouls in 30 seconds. But fouled out, never seen that before. Three fouls in 30 seconds. But anyway, he—I uh, uh, thought our bigs uh, did a good job. It's, it's pretty simple. You rebound, you defend, you, you play minutes, and, and then if, if you can set yourself and make a layup or two or a, a, a lane shot, you probably play more minutes. Are you okay, are you okay when Arrington fouls out like that? He's hustling, but you know, that, that technical was part of that. Well, he's 18 years old, so I'll leave it at that. We love him, but he's 18. Beyond the obvious, ending the losing streak, getting a win, et cetera, what does a game like this do for the psyche of these guys? Well, basketball is supposed to be a competitive sport and have some fun doing it. And if you lose too much, you don't have much fun. Uh, we hope this is a... Uh, a uh, nice way to start this week on the road. We have two tough road games coming up, and hopefully Isaiah Collier can get back and we can put our team together like we wanted to here for the, most of the season. It's been, been very challenging with all the injuries and people running in and, out of, in and out of lineups because of sickness and injuries. And then and then once they come back, it takes a couple games to, to, to even get to where you were before they got hurt. You know, And so hopefully this will be a uh, give our guys some confidence and, and uh, make them feel good that they can play at this level if, if, if they do the right things. He 
He played against Oregon in a minute and a half, I think. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, he didn't play against Oregon. It was the game before that. Uh, he played great tonight. You know, f f first, uh, 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 I think he missed his first three, and then he had made a defense mistake, and after that he was terrific. He uh, d just did everything for us. And, and he's very skilled, he's very smart, very tough. And uh, we, we need more of that. Uh, bench, bench was a huge force tonight with, uh, I think, 40, 40 points or 49, 47 points. Andy, um, congratulations on the game. Uh, can you uh, update us anything about this? And uh, secondarily, um, what was the thinking about uh, uh, having Kobe on the bench for a long stretch before you put him in the first half? Well, Ben sprained his ankle in the first half. I think everybody saw that. And uh, look, if this was game seven, uh, in the NBA Finals, we probably could have put him back in, but when you have a sprained ankle and uh, the doctor said, hey, uh, if you don't have to play him, don't play him, that's what we did. So he's going to try to get get some therapy here, get some ice, and uh, be ready to go on Wednesday night. We need him on the road. He played great tonight. And he's had a couple of really good days of practice. Uh, and then uh, Kobe, uh, you know, we, we took G DJ out of the lineup. We took Kobe out of the starting lineup, and then um, – the rotation tonight it seemed, seemed seemed to work for the most part, and we'll keep uh, got a lot a lot of different lineups this year, and tonight just seemed to work. So. I thought he played. I thought he get, had a lot of energy when he came in the game, and he had four assists, no turnovers. He missed a couple easy shots, but he, I thought he was very effective. Played great defense. Yeah, he, he's had a good week. Uh, I think uh, you know, he's, he's a freshman, and to go through what he did, he missed a lot of time uh, to, to uh, go through preseason, and, and then he didn't play until December. So, so he, he's, a, he's a young player, and uh, I think you've seen some growth out of him. I, at, least, at least I have. I've seen a lot of growth out of him. And uh, when Boogie and Boogie and Isaiah were out together. It gave these guys an opportunity to play more minutes as a group. Um, and now I think Bronny and Oziah Sellers have stepped their games up and improved. With the rebounding last game, you talked about how you really weren't happy with the things. Did they hear you? Did you tell them that behind closed doors? Like, what just sparked tonight of rebounding by 20? Well, I, they, uh, yeah, we, we, we did it in behind closed doors, out on the street, and uh, everywhere else. Okay, so the big's got a rebound. You can't have a good rebounding team if your bigs, your bigs got to start it off. Your guard, it'd be nice if your guards rebound too. But you know, Drew Peterson left, led us in rebounding last year, seven and a half a game, and Drew's not on our team right now. So big guys need to rebound the ball. You talked about Oziah and them have been the confidence of these games. Where, what's what's this ceiling? It, it seems like he could be potentially a guy that can score points like Boogie does. Well, that's why we recruited him. We 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 saw that potential, but you know he, he's come a long way. Um, he's put on 15 pounds since last year. He's, you know, he's he's uh, he played great defense tonight. Uh, he's he's a tremendous shooter, and but you just can't be a if you're just a spot up shooter, you can't play at this level unless unless you, you know, you, you have four other guys around you that do everything. You know, so, so he you saw him put the ball on the floor numerous times tonight. Uh, he he's he doesn't turn the ball over a lot. But he needs a rebound. You know, that's another uh, part of his growth that needs to come. You know, this is the first three rebounds in his career and or since grade school. So that that was helpful. But he uh, is really, uh, uh, you can see his confidence and his toughness. And um, we, we think he's going to be a terrific player. And you know, we, we need him to help us now, yeah, which he's doing. Well, I told uh, we made a goal made a goal tonight today to get. Uh, Double-digit rebounds, which he did. And, um, that was impressive. I thought he was extremely active. He, he looked athletic. Uh, he uh, boxed out, and then he uh, made some really good plays for his teammates. I just told him before the game. I said, which, <laughs> "I said, you know, we need double-digit rebounds for you. Can, you. can you get more than ten? Ten or more?" He said, "I got you, coach." So, maybe I should have said that every game to him. <laughs> Uh, 
during one of the huddles in the second half, uh, you were outside the huddle talking to Vince, who obviously had good play in the second half. I told him that uh, he was pl he played great when he was in there. I said, I'm sorry you hurt, you hurt your ankle. He said, but we're going to need you uh, next week. And I said, if, if, if this was uh, game seven, I, uh, we'd put you back in right now, but it's not. And so, but you played great. I'm just trying to pump him up because he, I thought he was really dominant. He was, he was terrific. Coach, you had a big lead late in the game, and there were a lot of key players still out there. Was that a bit of a recognition on your front that there's still a lot of chemistry building that maybe is happening just a little bit of time for us to happen? Well, Vince was out, and jo uh, AP fouled out. You know, and uh, I was, it was nice to get Zach Brooker and J.D. Plow in the game last two minutes because they're such a big part of our team. With all the injuries, they, they practice more than most of our starters this year because <laughs> they never get hurt and everybody else does. So they, they actually, they've actually improved as, as players. J.D.'s one of the best rebounders on the team. You saw him get an offensive rebound. And, you know, we, have, we, have a, we had a contest who was, who was the best walk-on we've ever had here, and, and it came down to Zach and Kurt Karras. And, when he when Zach shot the air ball tonight, you know, Kirk kind of smiled, said, said I might have taken the lead. Uh, but, but Zach and JD w were great. Uh, they've been great all season. So it, it's nice to be able to get them in, in, in you know, a two minute stretch. And, and um, they, they, they're both good players. On that note, as a head coach, when you're up by 30, you look at the clock, when do you decide it's the time to, you know, to put these guys in? When do you make that decision? It's nice to. Be, have that opportunity to do. I'll tell you that. But uh, you know, try try to give them. Uh, we try to give them a little more time than we probably normally would. If uh, but we we were, had a big lead, and um, uh, so I, I guess it's game to game. It's or, or someone will tap me on the shoulder and say, "Hey, you know, we got Zach down there," and, and so. Uh, but but it is it is nice to have that opportunity because they deserve it. Uh, I thought they did a good job defensively, first of all, because you can't play that small if you if you don't defend a rebound. And so those are our three smallest guys, and, and uh, uh, I thought they really were tough on defense, and, uh, and they shared the basketball. I was really impressed with Boogie tonight because he, uh, he had a lot of playmaking opportunities. He was just hitting the right guy, the open guy, over and over and over again, whether it was the big man, the, the cross-court pass, the back action, the, the strong side. He was just making the right plays, and then, and then Ozzie and Bronny, I thought, uh, off his Boogie's initial playmaking were really good. Um, let's say a month ago, you thought he could win at the top of this game by 30 points with uh, uh, Isaiah, Cody, and Boogie combining for 10 points? Uh, probably not. You know, it's, uh, it's a credit to our players. Some guys have, uh, are improving. Uh, we still have some work to do. Uh, I thought we were playing really well in that Cal Stanford week when we won, won those two games, and, and I thought our team was gelling. We, we scored 84 and 93 points and had 29 assists, and then Stanford 18 assists, six turnovers, and that's when the three guys went out with, with uh, Josh. Uh, Boogie hurt himself against Stanford, and then, uh, of course, Isaiah with his hand. Uh, tonight, is, it's nice to get back to that type of thing with 22 assists and seven turnovers. That, uh, I thought I saw a lot of, a lot of similarities between tonight, uh, today's game, as well as the Cal and Stanford games because of how we were moving the ball, how we were defending, and how we were sharing it with not turning the ball over. And, and uh, uh, hopefully this can continue uh, next week. Last one. Well, unfortunately, we've had a lot of experience of integrating players back on our team this year. So I'm sure we'll figure it out or try to figure it out. Uh, as coaches, you just – sometimes you, you put lineups out there and it works, and sometimes it doesn't work as much. So it's, it, it's a little unpredictable, but we just want to get him back, uh, get him out there. He, he's a big part of our team, and uh, you know, we, we can't be the team we thought or could be without our full team roster being healthy and, 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 and gelling together. All right, thank you. Thank you.
Um, I mean, these, these past, uh, whenever I've made games has been in pack, I've been focusing on rebounding more. And if, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a high volume scorer, as everyone knows. I, uh, I take what's given to me. But, uh, but one place I could make a difference was rebounding. I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty good rebounder. So, I mean, I, I haven't had a 10 in a minute. I haven't had, a, I haven't had 10 rebounds in a long time. So, I, uh, that's, all, that's all I was trying to do. Like scoring, I didn't really care. I, didn't really, I don't really care to score. Or I do, but, you know, like, like, like that. So, uh, rebounding is like one of those things where I can make an impact and hopefully make, make like, impact the whole game as the whole game. So, yeah. Coach Enfield was really disappointed with the rebounding against Oregon, and then tonight you had the 14 rebounds. What did he tell you, and just how did you respond to, to his words? Uh, I mean, me personally, I, I mean, I, I've been, I've been rebounding. It was more of just getting every, like. Kind of just a group effort, you know. I, I don't, I don't like to just be like oh, I'm doing blah blah blah. But uh, you know, it's, it's a, it was a team effort, you know. And we were, we were told our rebounding stats or like how many rebounds we have total in Pac-12 play. And I, I don't know if it's 11 games now, but uh, yeah, like some of us had like single-digit uh, defensive rebounds, and you know, that's not that's not going that's not going to cut it in 11 games of Pac-12. So you know, I. Uh, just, just making it, just making rebounding a main emphasis. And defensively, we, we've, we've been pretty, pretty good defensively the past however many games it's been. Even, even through the losses, we've been really good defensively. But, you know, rebounding is that thing that we need to really. I don't even know the right word. Cap, get, you know, <laughs> like get to uh, in order to uh, be that team, be that team that's going to win by thirty. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously that was uh, tough, tough to take, cause especially as a junior. I've been here for three years, so I'm completely focused on this team and not going anywhere. But those those DMPs are on me. I mean, I didn't have the best stretch of games from I think Colorado to through the Arizona trip, so that's completely on me. Just be a positive energy on the bench and just know that I'm not not going to play for the rest of the season. So don't be an energy vampire and keep the attitude up. And I'm a leader on this team and I have to lead by example. Uh, we all had a feeling this morning that we we're going to win this game, so I knew I wasn't not going to play. So it was just good to get up by a lot and just getting out there. I just thought, be aggressive, play my game. I mean, I made that. Uh, missed that three in the first half and then gave, uh, who was it? Um, Stevens, that layup in the first half. So I just blamed that on two games being stiff. So I just tried to fix it in the second half, and I feel like I played good defense and rebounded the ball for the most part. We just knew, I mean, USC doesn't lose six games in a row. We don't lose two in a row. So we had to break this streak, and the fans are disappointed. The school's disappointed in us, so we had to come out and prove ourselves. Um, just a long day yesterday, just sitting in here talking to each other and trying to figure out what we need to do, and just a lot of honest conversations that needed to happen between the players, coach and players. So we figured it out, and... We need to start a winning streak right here. Uh, me personally, I didn't watch the game. I didn't. Oh, I didn't rewatch it because that was one of the <laughs> one of those games where, you know, I wasn't very happy. So, uh, I mean, I've been I've been playing them for <laughs> five years or five years now. So, I mean, I have a good I have a good five years. I have a good grip on them, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, it was you know we should. I don't, I don't like being that guy, but we should we should be winning, like winning these games that we're losing. You know, like we we ha we just have that that quality of a team. Like we just have those guys that can win that can win games. You know, and it's it's just one of those tough ones where we look back on it. And it's like damn, like we got. I, don't, I think we got blown out. I, I don't really remember much of that game, but. I we got blown out. It was just one of those ones where it's like, like fudge, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't rewatch it. I just do what I do. Or I just do what I do. Just play hard and hopefully, hopefully something good happens. Among all the other emotions, is it almost a relief to now have that streak in the rearview mirror? Yeah, or, uh, yeah, it it is a relief. Obviously, I mean, Webb. 
it was, it's just it takes a toll on you mentally losing that many games in a row. And I know I've never, I don't think I've lost three games in a row in my career since living in the U.S. I don't know about DJ. Maybe he lost multiple at J. Sarah, but yeah, um, yeah. It's just it's it's exciting, but we're not we're not acting like this is our championship. We just need to get it, get something going going into March and going into Pac-12 and just try and make a point. It's nice. I mean, playing playing at USC has been a dream of mine. I mean, I worked so hard to get where I am today, and it means a lot to me to wear that USC jersey. So, being out there and just playing well, I don't couldn't care if I score or not, but just playing well, being aggressive, playing the right way, and trying to help this team win is all I care about. It's nice. I think I think the biggest thing for him was just the, like the speed of the game, you know. And he's he uh, like his struggles came from not even like his own mistakes. It was just, or it, I mean, obviously, like he made them, but it was just like he he just sped himself up too much, you know. Like he, uh, it was one of those things where you know, like the whole thing happened. He didn't play for I don't even know how many months <laughs> it was, but uh, I mean, again, it's just he's been playing for since how like eleven games now, like or. How long? Or shoot, twenty games. I, I don't know. I don't know the main stats, but uh, I mean, he he's been he's been he's made a lot of growth as a point guard specifically, and I feel like he's he's definitely taking the back seat to his skill, like to his skills, you know, instead of trying to make something happen. Like he he's just one of the, he's one of the most talented players I've I've played with, and you know, like I said, he can lean back on his talent a little bit, and. That's not. I mean, that's not a bad thing. If you have it, use it. You know. So, uh, I think it was just one of those things where you needed to grow into college basketball. And college basketball isn't something to jo- like joke around about. It's some t- like it's hard, it's hard to score. It's hard to make things happen. So, uh, it's just growth. And I feel like he's he's gonna be fine. Obviously, he's gonna be good. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.